yesterday I received a message, a really heartfelt message from someone who really, really wants to get involved uh, with the tiny house community and make it a career. And uh, I got to thinking about it. I've thought about this in the past. I actually shot a video in the, in the past on this exact subject, but it sucks. So I think I need to redo it and make it a little bit better. But I want to talk with you guys today about starting a career with tiny houses. <clears throat> okay, so before we start this uh, video, I want to make a couple points. The first one being, uh, if you're someone that is kind of uh, seeing that the tiny house uh, trend is really popular and you're wanting to cash in on that, uh, you want to get in and get out or get in and uh, do whatever it takes to make the most money possible, uh, this video is not for you. This video will not work for you because the things that I'm going to explain in this video will probably not work. Uh, it's only for people who have uh, high integrity and absolutely love tiny houses and want to actually make the tiny house community better by adding a unique value add service. Another point I like to make is that um, I'm no authority or no expert on this subject. I'm just telling you what I've done and what I feel like has worked pretty well for me. Um, I'm just going to take you through a couple steps. I jotted down some notes <clears throat> and uh, hopefully I'm not blabbering too much but I thought about this and uh, there's a lot of people who love tiny houses and they're wanting to uh, get involved and, and eventually make a career out of it because they feel like they have they feel like they, what they have is uh, will help the, the tiny house community in a value add way. All right, so let's get started. Way back in 2010 when I first got started with tiny houses, uh, I've told this story before, I uh, contacted uh, Kent Griswold from Tiny House Blog and he really, really helped me out getting started uh, and the whole tiny house scene, he was already established and uh, I knew I had an idea of the work. There really wasn't a marketplace for the tiny house movement uh, and that's what made me think about tiny house listings and uh, he really, really helped, got my career started. Um, and so that really, really taught me the importance of networking. All the time I had people touch base with me and uh, or I'll touch base with them and we go on to be friends or we at least become, you know, good working partners together. And if you're thinking about starting a tiny house business in whatever capacity that is, uh, it's super important to get involved. And the great thing about networking in the tiny house community is it's a really, really small community. Uh, so people are always looking to help other people out, especially those who have a good idea or just a good worth ethic or just likable. So another good way of networking, really good one, is to uh, attend networking events and workshops. Uh, a lot of times, especially when you get a little bit of clout in the industry, uh, you'll be invited to sorry, you'll be invited to uh, attend workshops, uh, and be a guest speaker and that type of thing. And uh, even if you aren't, you should still go so you can kind of get an idea of what people are thinking, you know, other than yourself. When you meet someone in person for the first time. Uh, who loves tiny houses, it kind of gives you a unique perspective, at least temporarily, and maybe give you a little bit of inspiration uh, for your own uh, business. So that's all I have to say about networking. Okay, so the next piece of advice that I would recommend is to be yourself, be unique. Uh, there's a lot of people who have been, uh, or quite a few people who have established themselves and we're actually pioneers of the tiny house movement. For one example, I, told, I mentioned earlier, Kent Griswold. He started his blog back in 2007. And uh, that's, I mean, we're looking at eight years ago that he's been, he's been blogging. And uh, he has some of the most unique content for uh, tiny houses out there, literally thousands of articles. Uh, and so he's, he's been doing that. He blogs on tiny houses and he's kind of like at the forefront as far as uh, new articles and unique content. And there's still people who are trying to take that same approach, which is cool, but uh, they're doing it in a similar fashion that Kent Griswold does. And uh, that's already been done. That's already been done. So to think that you can kind of steamroll your way in there and, um, <laughs> and kind of do what he's done and be as successful as Kent has, uh, it's just probably not going to work. Um, he's just too far ahead of everyone else and he's already done that. So you're really not adding any value. Another example is my good buddy Deke. He, um, he has a, a blog where he talks about uh, tiny houses and all, but he has a unique perspective. He's the grungy, kind of punky, you know, edgy, and also talking about, he talks a lot about um, salvage materials, and he holds really, really cool workshops, so he's not just blogging. And he, you know, does really cool videos here on YouTube. I'll, link, I'll leave a link in the description to his YouTube channel. So he's got a lot going on, too. 
Then there's another example, my good friend Michael Jansen, uh, Jansen from Tiny House Living and Tiny House Design. He's kind of known as uh, putting out high quality tiny house plans uh, on the cheap. And so that's what his edge is. And I could go on and on and on with other examples of people. But they found a niche for themselves and their own voice and they've kind of uh, rolled with that. And that's what I recommend for you. Another example is tiny house listings. When I first started, I noticed there was no marketplace for tiny houses. There was people already back in 2010 that had tiny houses and wanted to sell them, but there was really nowhere to do that. And there was people looking for tiny houses who didn't want to build one, necessarily build one for themselves. And there wasn't one of those either, so that's what made me decide to uh, start tiny house listing. Same thing with tiny house swoon. It's known for um, high, quali high quality pictures uh, all in one place. Just nothing but beautiful pictures of the nicest tiny homes. And uh, there wasn't such a thing back in 2012, and then that's what made me decide to launch it. So I think that's enough examples. So there's probably one of several disciplines that you'll do if you decide to go into the tiny house industry. And so now I'll just kind of go through each one. And uh, if you don't plan to do this, just kind of skip ahead to what is more in line with what you're planning to do. And, uh, and I'll just give you some, some ideas uh, that maybe will help you out. Sorry for the horrible handwriting, I'm left-handed, so that's like my get out of jail free card. Uh, but anyway, so it, there's a lot of people who have built a tiny house, a tiny house, tons of people have built a tiny house, and they realize how cool the community is and how they want to be involved and they want to do something. I can give you a million examples of people who have done this, and it's really cool. And uh, so they want, they what they did was they blogged along the way, the journey. When I say they, I mean like, this, maybe not necessarily everyone had this, uh, maybe this isn't you, but I'm just giving you as an example because it's very prevalent. They uh, built a tiny house and blogged along the way. Then when it was all done, they're like, now what? Um, I really, I really, really want to keep uh, putting the word out there and that type of thing. So they, you know, more times than not want to keep blogging, which is cool. But like I said before, there's a ton of bloggers out there for the tiny house industry. And if you want to actually make a career, you have to make a certain amount of money uh, to live if you want it to be your full-time career and uh, just a quick side note it took me well over a year to be full-time with tiny house listings the first year I was in business with tiny house listings I made a dollar 73 per hour so it's, um, it's not easy so you'll probably you know need your side income on the to start out with but what you want is uh, an idea or a perspective or a voice or an angle to where people are going to want to uh, see what you're doing they want to um, they want to know what you're up to and want to keep coming back. And I can give you a quick example. Tiny House Big Adventure. Um, what they did was great. They brought people along in a very creative way. And, um, and so now they're still on the road and they're doing tiny house tours and they're writing blogs and photography and, and, and all that. And they've got it going on and done a really, really good job. Um, so that's an example, like if you want to uh, blog. But what I recommend is if you blog, don't just offer blogging. Offer something else. Um, offer whether it's plans, whether it's an online workshop. Mariah Cause does that from uh, the Tiny Comic Camper. Um, and so she's done very well with that. Um, think of what you can offer besides just blogging to where people want to check your website out, which more than likely you'll have ads on your website. Uh, so you want to have ad revenue. And you also want to offer something else to help generate enough more in, more income to where you can support yourself and if you have a family, a family. Um, so that's my, my advice for blogging. I really can't think of anything else. <laughs> All right, this next one is really hits home with me because I work with a lot of uh, people who have decided to do this. Oh my God, it's hot out here. See how much I'm sweating? See what I go through for you guys? <laughs> um, is building. If you want to become a tiny house builder, um, there's a lot of advice I can offer you because I'm, you know, I, like a, again, I've worked with a lot of tiny house building companies and tried my best to help them, you know, get customers and get the name out there. So I actually took some notes. So if you see me staring down at my phone, sorry about that. First thing is to have a business name that's awesome, that represents what you do, the type of houses you have, maybe your location, something that people will say, oh, okay, cool. Like, uh, for example, the most prevalent one is the tumbleweed. People are like, oh, that's a tumbleweed. It just kind of just flows. And I, I don't know, it's a great name. And uh, so make sure you do that. Next thing, while we're on the subject of names, is to give each of your models, if you decide to have models and not just a custom build for each person if you actually decide to create some models that can be replicated and built for customers over and over make sure you give those a really cool name too 
um, preferably one that will kind of uh, piggyback off your actual name of your company. Next thing, uh, the thing that will get people in involved or interested in your builds more than anything else are the pictures. That is the absolute first thing, but that's the key difference. Um, a lot of times, you know, I own the, the, the domain Tiny House Swoon, and people will send me photos of uh, a, a beautiful tiny house, but you can tell the lighting's not good, it was taken on a crappy phone, and, uh, and I ask them to go out and, you know, have better pictures taken, and they bring it back, and it's amazing the difference. You, the quality of the tiny house, and uh, maybe it will stage and things like that. Stage your tiny house, that's another example. But key point, hire a really, really good photographer that will show off, that's willing to show off all the hard work you put into your tiny house. So here is another really, really, really good idea. Um, have an open house. Have open houses for your tiny house. Here's an extreme example, but super cool. My good buddy Joe Everson from Tennessee Tiny Homes many years ago when he was just getting started out, maybe 2012, 2000, yeah, probably 2012, he actually did a cross-country tiny house tour where he set up dates for where he was going, took his tiny house, went to Lowe's parking lots, Walmart parking lots. I think he went to Walmart parking lots. So he can have uh, people check out what he's up to. And I could be wrong, but I think he uh, landed some sales that way. He definitely got a lot of media attention through me and Kent Griswold and other people who have a Facebook presence. Uh, and so that kind of put him on the map. Now he's a tiny house builder and probably one of the most, if not the most busy tiny house builders out there. And uh, he is well deserved. All right, another, this is a perspective I have because I get these kind of emails all the time. I'll get emails from people who say, uh, are there any builders in such and such area? Like, for example, if they're in Kansas, are there any builders in Kansas? Well, truth be told, that really doesn't matter where the builder is because most tiny house builders, a lot of them are willing to deliver. Uh, maybe not all the way across country, but within their region. And uh, so if you are willing to deliver, which I highly recommend, make sure it's known everywhere, your Facebook page, on your voicemail, on your website, make it very, very prevalent that you deliver because that's a big deal. And you know, you may even get customers who are willing to drive very far or fly to see what you have to offer. Uh, Cause in the grand scheme of things, a flight to where you offer is a small price to pay to ensure that you get a qual that they're getting a quality uh, tiny home. As many people who buy a tiny house, they're using their life savings or a good portion of it. The next point I want to make is to do a video tour of the tiny house that you just made and make it high quality again, like I said, like the, the photos. That way people can get an idea, not just through still photos, but like where they're at. You can take them through the house, give them an idea, they can see the quality in your work. I think it's just a good idea. It's one more thing that I would do if I was a tiny house builder to make sure that, I, that my customers or potential customers know what I have to offer and more than just a, a still image, which again, that's a good way to go too. So. I hope I'm not blabbering. Okay, last point I want to make, and this is definitely a plug for a service that I offer, but I really don't care because I know it's awesome. I know it works. I have a uh, section on our website called the Tiny House Builders Directory. And uh, there's a couple dozen tiny house builders on there already. And just right out of the gate to let you know there's a small fee for it, but it's certainly worth it. Um, what happens is you get listed on the Tiny House Builders Directory. And also, I know who you are, so when I get emails, which happens all the time, I'll direct people to you if you're on the Tiny House Builders directory. And not just that, you also have an ad that runs through the Tiny House listing site that gets seen literally tens of thousands of times per month, and that links directly to your Facebook page, to your website, wherever you want me to link it to. It's called the Tiny House Builders directory. You can go from no online presence to off and running in just a matter of minutes because once I get it set up, the traffic starts coming to you. So I thought I'd share that with you. I know it's a good service and I highly recommend it. <laughs> so this is a discipline that I have the least experience with. I really know nothing about designing plans, but I know lots of people who do design plans and I put them out there for sale. And uh, I thought I'd give you a quick bullet list of what I think if I design plans, what I would do. So here you go. The first thing I would do if I design plans uh, would be to offer a free plan. And the reason I would do that is to get people on my mailing list. So that way I can chat with them in the future and then also give people an idea of the quality of designs that I build. And even, it doesn't necessarily have to be a tiny house free. It could be a, a chicken coop. Just anything to give people an idea of the type of plans that you des uh, design and how well received they are. Um, so that's that. Next thing, uh, the most important thing, there's too many people who design, who design tiny house plans who have no 
working model of, uh, of any of the plans that they've done. All they have is blueprints to give people an idea of uh, you know, what their tiny house that they designed looks like. My recommendation, if it were me, I would go to, I would go to a tiny house builder and say, look, let's build an example of this you know, uh, and work some, some of the details out between you and I. But uh, without at least one example of one of the plans that you've designed in, in a real working, uh, you know, real production, it's going to be a tough sell or tougher sell. Another thing is price point. If you're designing tiny house plans, uh, this is the same thing for building a tiny house too. Uh, people in the tiny house community are very price sensitive. Uh, when the tiny house uh, movement first started, it was much more do DIY based and it still is. But there's a uh, growing, and there, there has been for a while, people who have no interest in building a tiny house. And, uh, but the problem is people are very price sensitive because what if they buy the tiny house plan and decide it's not for them, then why? They're stuck. Uh, if it were me, I would have very affordable or reasonably affordable uh, tiny house plans to get people uh, less price sensitive and to let them know that uh, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not gouging you. Uh, I, this is what I think it's worth and this is what I'm going to sell it to you for. And if people buy it and for whatever reason don't like the tiny house plan, at least they have some money left over to buy a different one. Did I mention it's hot? And that's all I have to say about tiny house plans. So here's a quick laundry list of things that I put together for you that I believe are best practices that have helped me well and I, many other people that I know who have made a career in the tiny house community uh, has served them well too. So here we go. First and most obvious is to have a website. Have a good website. Uh, a lot of people use WordPress, uh, which is uh, used to be a blogging platform, which it still is, but there's a lot of themes out there that you can go and search that are pre called premium themes. And uh, you just kind of tweak it and make your own website. And that way you don't have to go and hire an expensive web designer, which, hey, you might want to do that if you have the budget. That's cool. It doesn't, a new website doesn't necessarily have to cost you a bundle. Next thing uh, is have a social presence. Uh, this might be seem obvious, and I know there's a lot of people uh, out there who do not like social media, and I, I totally understand, but if you're going to have a business in 2015 and beyond, you almost have to have it. Otherwise, people really are going to know about you, and they're not going to you know, share what you have to offer, your pictures, videos, whatever. And that can really help grow, especially if the stuff you're putting out there is quality. Another best practice is to have a newsletter. Uh, this one might seem obvious, and or maybe not so obvious, is to when people come to your website, there's a good chance they'll look at what you have to offer and leave. Uh, that sucks. What you want people to do is to fill out your newsletter so later on you can get in touch with them, whether you have a sale or some information, or they might want to actually hear from you. And uh, there's two platforms that I know work best. There's one called AWeber. I think that one's been around for a very long time. Uh, that one's pretty affordable. But the one that I use that I love is called MailChimp. M-A-I-L-C-H-I-M-P. All one word, MailChimp.com. And uh, that makes it super easy for people to, one, uh, sign up from your website for, to your mailing list, and two, um, receive new blogs, uh, blog posts from your website uh, via email, which is pretty cool too. The next thing that I would recommend that is kind of goes back to networking is to reciprocate. When someone does something nice for you, do something nice for them. It always comes back to help. Um, I know I'm not naming any names or implying anyone specifically, but there's a lot of people out there who want people to do stuff for them, but they haven't done anything for everyone, anyone else. And it's super one-sided and it just won't work out. You won't make any traction with other people. Um, you have to do something nice. This goes back to way before <laughs> social media or anything like that. Just simply be nice and be a good person. Help others and they'll help you. Uh, cause and effect. It's just as simple as that. And the last bit of advice that I'm going to leave you with if you're interested in starting a tiny house career for yourself, whether it just be part-time or whether it be full-time and you're just going to go full steam, is to have fun and be yourself. Be unique. There's nobody else like you. If that shines through, people will love you for it. And they'll see that you love tiny houses and uh, they want to do things for you. You do things for them. Everything will be peachy. Hopefully. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other ideas that I probably missed, I most likely missed, please leave them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you decide to make a tiny house career for yourself, good luck. Contact me at support at tinyhouselistings.com. I'll do whatever I can to help you. I believe in the calls and hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.